What's going on guys and for the win here we are back with our franchise mode as the Montreal Canadiens and here at the deadline well we were talking about some possible trades and a comment section filled with seemingly a lot of people saying to trade Weber but then some diehard Canadians fans saying you can't trade him he's our captain and maybe it's not realistic so Here's the challenge that I come across in almost every franchise mode. How to balance entertainment with the spark of realism that at least makes sense for now. But I will go back to NHL 17 when I was once told Montreal will never ever trade Pacioretty. I will go back and recall comments that I had for that when I traded Pacioretty. Hilariously, around the same year that Pacioretty was actually traded in real life, um, that, you know, he will never get traded. So, realism is only realism until it happens in, you know, until something crazy happens in real life. Until whatever's traded in real life or something like that. Like, yeah, maybe it'll never happen. Then you can say, oh, you were wrong. But if it does happen, then, you know, the, the thing of, alright, so here, my point about realism is you can only predict one, two, maybe three years of the future in the NHL. You know, the when when did when did the uh, Ottawa get eliminated in the conference finals and then when did Eric Carlson get traded? If you were if you were a a, a, a Senators fan when they almost went to the cup, you would be like, "Oh, this team is never trading Eric Carlson, especially for peanuts." A few years later, Eric Carlson is traded for peanuts. So, like I said, realism I will try to give as much realism as I think is possible. Like, when I make trades, I'll try to make it look a bit more fair than even EA is ranking it. Because, especially if we do pull the trigger with this Weber trade here. I'll try to add in every single ounce of realism that I can. Because, yeah, some there's some things with the value here that are harder. Like, his value shouldn't probably be this high. I, I would say Weber's value should be around Petrie's value. Because age-wise, contract-wise, overall-wise, all those things added together, he should have a lower value. Um, but yeah, that's just... So I will do my best, basically, to balance realism and entertainment. As I always try to do, and I know I'm never, ever going to be able to make everyone happy. That's just how it's going to go. Might get some hate for certain moves, certain times. That's just, you know, whatever. That's just what happens. So, now... All that out of the way. Oh, yeah. So, apparently, I this whole time, I'm going to tell you a funny story. This whole time, I thought this dude was Finnish. So, I've been calling, I've been, I've been, <laughs> I've been pronouncing his last name as I might, as you might, you know, a Finnish last name with the, with the soft, with the soft J. But, apparently, he's Canadian and it's pronounced Juleson. So, I will do my best to remember that. Thank you guys for correcting me on those fun pronunciations that I'm always really, really good on. You guys know me. I'm, I'm the best at pronunciations. In this game. <laughs> and if you can't detect that, that is sarcasm. Anyway, so if we were to make a Weber trade, and I'm not saying we will. If we're going for the pure realism, not gonna fuck up Calgary. <laughs> that doesn't that doesn't do much for realism. What we could do is something like this. Move him back to Nashville. Nashville, I could see this happening. Players like returning to their old teams all the time. Nashville traded Subban. They could use some help on that right side, especially in the top. You got Ekholm, who's a lefty. You got Ellis, who's a righty, but that's your top, you know, that's your top four. So this I could actually see. And Predators have always had that identity of being a kind of defensive team. And while they don't have the strongest of forward cores, it's good. With strong defense and two uh sorry. Tukaras, Pekarine. That is something I could see happening. Yeah, sure, it might not happen this year. But this is, again, a video game. And again, I got to balance realism with entertainment. So, theoretically, if we were to go for this trade, I would say we need to take back some kind of an awkward contract off their hands that maybe it's not the greatest. So, like... They don't really have any bad con except for Benino. Benino's a terrible contract. So obviously, let's take we'd take back someone like Benino. And yeah, that would help them. They'd be able to that would help them sign Yossi maybe next year. Getting another four mil off the books. Granlin might leave, but he's on a one year. So we'd have to take back a contract, something like that. To make that go through. 
So let's explore that option. Take back Benino as a bad contract. Give ourselves a couple picks. They don't want to give up their pick from next year, which is interesting. So we do something like that. Now it's too first still too much for Weber, you have to ask. Well, maybe. Maybe. So what else could we give to them that would kind of spice it up a little bit? Maybe a top six type defenseman prospect. You know, a, a guy who's going to be serviceable in a, in a few years. I can see that happening. Off, off the, um, you know, off the books as well. So yeah, uh, you want to hold on to some of these guys definitely because they're closer to NHL rather right? than. That's weirdly they don't want Romanoff. I guess they don't really want prospects here. But on the left hand side, maybe they want. Yeah, they might want a forward prospect more. Do we have any kind of mid tier forward prospects that we can give up to them? Perhaps. And I will address some of the people's uh, potential concerns in a sec as well. Anyway, a bunch of these top nine guys here. Bonstad, left winger, playmaker. No, sorry, center, lefty playmaker. Center, playmaker. A couple of center playmakers. All three centers. All three playmakers. We could probably give up. Wow, look at how many center prospects the, we have. As well as a center two-way forward. If I had to give one of these guys up, it'd probably be McShane here. Or or give two of them. You know, toss what give two of them. <laughs> give them a couple center prospects, even though they're pretty stacked in the center wise right now. So we give them a couple prospects as well to kind of push this across. So what this does is it takes care of the um the value discrepancy that I would have for Weber. We add in a couple younger guys for him on the forward end, which they're uh as I said, kind of lacking some talent on the forward end. Um, Potential-wise, especially. They really don't have any good potential. They have some decent guys in their prime right now. Obviously, Tolvanen. But uh, he's on the team, so I don't really call him a prospect anymore when, you, when he's on the team. But yeah, all the guys in their prime. So taking guys back like they are right now, having guys fill in in a bit when you got bigger contracts on the book. But right now, they're, they're getting some steals of contracts in a couple areas. Anyway, so that's kind of the uh, the gist of that here. And then we're getting back a couple firsts. The first for this next year, that pick, and things like that for Weber. And taking back a bad contract. Now, is that... Now, it might even be ripping us off a bit, which is, you know, not a big deal to me. I'd love to get some other, like, a mid kind of pick here as well. That wouldn't be too bad. Now we are, oh yeah, and I should mention that we are going to have draft pick restrictions. Okay, we already have. So there's, well, we already maxed out on the first two rounds now. Oh my goodness. We actually have too many picks already. We got to actually trade some. <laughs> yeah, let's see. One. Wow. Yeah, that's okay. So I'm going to get going with the 12 pick draft restriction. We have 12, so if we take this back, we got to send back a pick anyway. So, you know what? Let's take advantage of that. Let's send forth. Um, hold on to our own fourth, obviously. Let's trade San Jose's and Winnipeg's fourth in this deal. Add that in. Couple fours, and then let's try to take back another two. And then we'll be... We'll be maxed out on what we're trying to do here. So. Yeah. I like this. So, basically, Weber... Taking back a bad contract, giving a couple prospects and getting some picks, but also moving back some picks. And you can see from the value, it's way in their favor. It minus some of that value because we think Weber's bad. It's more even, and it's more even from, I think, a realism standpoint. We're giving Nashville back their old star defenseman. We're get, taking back a bad contract. We're getting a few picks back, but we're also throwing back some mid picks. Now, fours, I mean, you don't throw those away too easily. I think a couple fours. I don't know if they'd take care of a second. Maybe I should take back a third instead, but we're also giving away two top nine guys. So I think this is something that could be classified as realistic, realistic, but it's also what people want in me to trade Weber. So I'm not, I'm not making a steal of a trade here. I'm actually, you could consider me getting ripped off, but I'm okay with that to try to make a balance here. So I'm sure I'll still probably get some hate for this. 
But I think it's something that you need to do. And especially as in real life, Weber is going to be fine until he's, he won't start declining until he's 37, probably. But in this game, 37, 38, I would say for a guy like Weber, even though he's got bad knees. Um, in this game, he's just going to decline, like, maybe sooner. But sometimes they don't. I don't know. But these are these are kind of things. Unfortunately, the game has pretty hefty decline in retirement for those older guys sometimes. But hopefully not in this case. So, trade, trade made. Now we have Benino, who we obviously don't need, but we can replace Thompson with him. Throw in Benino so we at least use the guy. <laughs> so let's do that. Go ahead and do that. Oh, we got a plus on that line now, too. Now we move dudes up. Let's see, should I move Yul Well, Yulson will at least get pl pluses. But I kind of like him playing with Mete. That is a plus three, though. How about Mete? Um... I don't think so, because Kulak... Oh my goodness, yeah. Well, you know what, let's move up... Uh, sorry, Julson! Ah, it's gonna take... It's gonna be so hard for me to get out of that habit. So we can throw in Mike Riley there now. There we have that. Extra attacker. I'm gonna go with Kotkaniemi and Domi, because they're on separate lines. That'll kind of make sense. <laughs> All right! So, there's one. Now, we're not quite... I don't think we're quite done here. Obviously, I'm holding on to Price. That's that's a guy I don't think we're going to ever trade. And I agree with you guys. Yeah, we'll hold on. We're going to... Price is your first overall pick. He's your franchise goalie. We're holding on to him. I could move Kincaid. He's got a tiny bit of value. But again, now I'm going to show you guys what the draft picks restrictions are. So, it's, it's 12 pick total and you're only allowed five in the first two rounds. We're going with that format. So, there's our five in the first two rounds. Five plus seven is 12. So we're already maxed out on picks for this year. That's our restriction is 12. Now we could, and I'm thinking after we have a team together, we'll, we'll reduce it back to, we'll reduce it down to nine picks. Once we kind of spend two to three years retooling here. Because this isn't, a, you can't call it a rebuild. This is, a, they've already got a decent, decent team and a decent crop of younger talent already filling in. So there, okay, and now it's a, before I start making other trades, I will address a few of the things that people said in comments here, because I feel like I need to. Uh, Suzuki is not just scratching the AHL, he's in the, he's in the juniors, even though he is at 20, he was able to be in the juniors. So when I sent him down, it put him in juniors, so he is playing, he's getting time, and stuff like that. I just, I didn't want to play him with that depth in the NHL, and I can't play him in the AHL. So he's back in Owen Sound right now, and I knew I was going to get some kind of, uh, uh, controversy regarding Caulf Caulfield's uh, potential, but I didn't know I'd get any with Elanen's potential. People saying Elanen, not only saying Caulfield should be meaningly, but Elanen should be meaningly because Elanen is almost point per game in Finland. And, well, I mean, everyone loves Caulfield. <laughs> He's great. But here's the thing. Great success in Europe does not equal great success in the NHL. Good success in a few games in college doesn't mean this guy's going to be an elite player in the NHL. So, I I had to agree with Tugi's rating on Caulfield. I think, yeah, top six makes sense for where he was drafted. It makes sense when it comes to EA's drafts as well. Is that when he was drafted is when top sixes are usually going. When was this Elon? Elon is a second round pick. Like, how do you give a guy elite potential who hasn't touched NHL ice yet? Like, how do you do that? I don't know. Maybe I could have bumped him up overall-wise, but, yeah, it's just, it, those are to, Those are tough calls to make. I understand everyone thinks they're, you know, loves their prospects, and you watch them a lot, and you think, oh, this guy's going to be a stud, but, again, it doesn't always work out like that. I ha I was the same way this year with my prospects. I'm like, oh, hell yeah, dude. We're going to be, we don't need to sign anyone in the offseason. We got all these young guys coming in, and then, well, 0-4. <laughs> so, yeah, that's more of an extreme example, but... It's if you're a fan of the team, maybe you know think what you should be, what what that prospect should be, and take it back a notch or two, and you're probably more accurate. Because Caulfield, I yeah, he's gonna be. I think he's gonna be a second liner. You know, and I think he's gonna be skilled offensively. But again, we have to see what he does on NHL ice. So it's too hard to give them these high potentials at this stage, in my opinion. So that's kind of the reasoning behind all that all right now continuing on here with the deadline can't really pick up any more picks for this year obviously 
And uh, we have a couple first for next year now. How many picks could we grab? Well, we can grab a couple if we wanted to make any more trades here. Which we may want to do. Whoopsies. Notifications. And I don't know if we will, actually, though. Tatar, uh, you probably want to hold on to Tatar and Gallagher, at least for the, the, the time being. Yeah, we don't really have any other trades to make all these guys you want to hold on to. So I was considering perhaps another deal, but not really. The only one I would kind of deal away right now would be uh, Kincaid. Because, well, we could pick back any sort of goalie or call up Lindgren. Um, although, I don't know if he's, no, he's not listed as that. And he's killing it down there, so maybe you don't move him. But highly unlikely he's going to grow much more. But yeah, we can move Kincaid. We don't really need a solid backup anymore. He's on his last year of his deal, so. Let's, let's kind of look for someone who wants him. Someone, give him a chance. To, okay. Sharks want him. Alright, um, Leafs want another backup. What What do they have? Okay, yeah, something like this. We can grab a Hutch Hutchinson. There we go. They don't want to give him up, but... I guess they could play him AHL, but he'd have to clear waivers, wouldn't he? Yeah, he would. So they'll probably tell me, no, we got to clear waivers. Alright, so let's take back Hutchinson in the deal. And then grab a pick for next year. And see what I need the most. Um, a couple firsts. Can't get a second. Mm. Maybe a four and a seven? Could I swing that, getting a four and a seven in this for next year? I might be able to. Four and a seven. Picks we kind of need. Maybe. Giving up Kincaid and grabbing a four and a seven back with Hutchinson. Yes, we uh cheering in the streets. Okay. Well, <laughs> I don't know, man. I don't really value Kincaid as much as you do, but that's all right. It's a backup goalie, and he's not doing well. So I still feel like value, or realism-wise, we made an okay move there. All righty. Well, then. Moves have been made, and that will likely con conclude our trade deadline here. So Leafs get a more reliable backup for their playoff run in case Anderson has some issues. We just take back Hutchinson to spot fill. And we gain a couple picks, which we want. So there we have it. And there is our team. So we've been made, obviously, slightly worse. Getting some good, uh... Oh. I still want the plus three for my top four, though. Let's do that, though. Let's give Mete some uh, top two time. Might as well. We're, we're, uh... You know, we're putting faith in the younger guys. We're getting Juleson up onto the uh, top four. <laughs> Mete playing with Petrie now. We get good chemistries like that. So at least that'll keep them happy throughout the rest of this. I don't, they might play about real, they might play like way better too, but hold on. Yeah, that, this was a concern. Let's get Petrie in here. I didn't want, I knew it was, ooh. He doesn't like the power play. Okay, let's not get Petrie in there then. Let's put another forward in. <laughs> Do we even have another forward I could throw in there? I uh, already got Paling in there. Lekkonen's already in there. Dano, we literally our entire roster for... No, wait, where's where's Gallagher? No Gallagher? Oh, no, he's on there. He's on the... Oh, my goodness. Who do I even put on? <laughs> we only have one defenseman total on our power play. Juleson or Mete? Let's try to get Mete a goal. Oh, he already has a goal. The memes are over. Oh, man. Yeah, really no one. I guess I could roll with Petrie. Yeah, at least he's... Yeah, we'll get minuses, though. I'm not a fan of that, but I'll move him off the top. Far from ideal, but whatever. But now we got Tata on the top line. All right, so there we have it. Trade deadline over. Let the dislikes commence, and then let the war in the comment section commence as well. I know some people are going to disagree. Some people will agree. And that's the risk you take. Welcome to content creating on YouTube. You will never make anyone happy. And if you are wanting to be a content creator on YouTube at some point, accept that fact immediately. Just accept the fact and do do what makes you happy and what ma makes you have fun. Because that's what's most important. Alright, so there we are. Deadline is done. Trades have been made. Picks 
have been acquired. Now it's time for us to make the playoffs because we made our team worse. The EA Sim is going to grace us with dominance here. Watch. No, just kidding. It probably won't. But it's it, there's always that possibility. Let's see what happens here. Phil Veroni, was he actually... Huh. <laughs> Who was it and where was he? What? Um, did I misread something? <laughs> Maybe I completely missed. I thought it was someone coming back from injury, but I don't see him. Oh, here he is. Yeah, so he's a center. My bad. <laughs> oh. Where was he playing? I think over here or something. Yeah, must have been here. All right, where should you go now? Yeah, he is slightly better. Yeah, let's go with him. All right, get him in there. In you go. And oh yeah, someone mentioned I gotta change Caulfield's position to a right winger. Yeah, I don't know if I just miss, if he was mislabeled or I just didn't change. I can happen. I, I was doing so many rosters. I, man, I should. <laughs> there's a few times where I almost left people on like AHL low potential <laughs> because I was like, so like, just oh my goodness. No thanks. I was just like so trying to get their like attributes correct for their overalls and I just forget their potentials. <laughs> oh good, mild concussion. Perfect. Perfect. So of course we didn't get another depth guy back. We're going to have to call someone up or just throw in one of the trash guys, but which I honestly could do at this point. So screw it. Dale Weiss, you're a top two defenseman now, bud. Oh, I can't. Oh yeah. Why am I just clicking on him? There we go. You actually got to put him in the position. So yeah, we can do that. Again, It's my. he's going to be back in like two days because it's only a minor concussion. We all know minor concussions are the easiest injury to come back from in hockey, says EA. <laughs> so yeah, you literally missed two games. Wow. Um, can you imagine if people are only missing two games with concussions? Yikes. So, I mean, I guess they do still, but that's irresponsible. And it's irresponsible for you to be teaching that to kids, EA. How dare you? Well, I told you we're back to 500. All right, well, we lost again. Back below 500. Uh, Paul Byron is fully healed. He wasn't actually out. He's a tough guy. He's playing through that injury. Romanov, I don't believe he was out too, but I don't want to mess up with him because, well, he's got solid potential. Not using. Oh, yeah, and he's grown. 70 at 20, baby. Looking good. Looking solid. All right, yeah, we're starting to lose a few more games here, which is a... Uh, Kind of what you expect out of this team. Central Scouting has released a new report, so let's check out the Young Guns. Okay. Apparently Lafreniere never gets... At least we know what he is, so it's not a big deal that he doesn't get scouted. These other guys, though. You want them scouted. Now, I know Perfetti's a uh, medium elite, but I always forget what his quirks are and things like that. All right, well, I'm going to go back and do the thing with Byfield and the other guy, I guess. That guy's real, so ignore him. Now, Holloway's rest of the world because I didn't... He doesn't have a team. So, I didn't assign him, but I should have just put him on a team in the CHL so you can at least... But I'm pretty sure he's like an elite or some shit. Lower overall. Yeah, I don't have a rest of the world scout. I can move someone there to get him scouted, but... Yeah, so bear that in mind. If you if you have someone who's not on a, on a, a team or anything, OHL, but they're Canadian, they haven't been assigned yet or whatever... Um, yeah, put them on a team at random. I was kind of like not trying. I was like, oh, I got to keep it real. People are going to want them on the real teams if he's not on team. I thought he would still get scouted, but that's only with Americans. You don't have to put the Americans on a team because they don't have teams anyway. All their stats are faked, essentially. So, like, yeah, I was I got a bit confused on that one. So, for future reference, I will remember that. I'll just st stuff them on a team there. I want to get Askarov scouted if I can. I don't remember. I'm actually forgetting some of the guys I created in their potential. So that's it is going to be a surprise for some of them. 
All right, we're getting some of these guys around the range where we have a lot of picks. That's why you're seeing me assign a lot of these guys because we have, you know, first and second round picks, and this is a good range. Good range for them. All right, well, get, eh, he's already, he's real, so let's, let's go to potentials here and go from there. All right, plenty of elites. A lot of elites, man. All right, those guys are all being scouted. Perfect. This guy is not. And again, he's within the range of our seconds and stuff. So definitely want to keep track of him. Already being scouted. This guy's way later. So, but he's a goalie. Goalie is way later. If they have a couple ticks to elite, scout them. They could be, always be elite. All right, and that should be good for that. And how about some of my lows? That's a lot of one ticks. Oh, wow. Not a whole lot. Not a whole lot going on here for the lows. Interesting. This guy might be computer generated, so I'll scout him for shits and gigs. And wow, not a whole lot of lows in general. I mean, that's usually the case with the first couple of years. All right. Here's Fedberg. That's a decent one to scout there. That's kind of nuts, man. Wow. Yeah, not not a whole lot going on in the, in the way of a possible low. Whoa. Okay, he's only played two games. But, I, yeah, I just I caught those stats at the end against that A-plus competition. Scout him. Even though we might not get a whole lot. Of, are there any two, couple tick? Like, yeah, there we go. Another one. Bruce. Zane Bruce. What a name. Come on, be a steal. Any couple of these guys? Any? Eh, no, no, no. All right, let's get some goalies done. Because, again, still need some kind of a uh, carry price replacement eventually in the next few years, five or so years, I'd say. So there we go. That should be good for the scouting for now. I'm coming back to 500 like bosses. We're going back and forth between 500 and not 500. Here we are. We're back. Victor Mete's back. So get him back in there. <laughs> Looks like Carey Price is doing a bit better here. Towards the... What? Where is he? Oh. Huh. Did I double click? I don't know. It was weird. I don't know. Alright. A couple more losses. Yeah, we get back to 500. Then we drop below 500. Yeah, the menu lag's throwing me off, man. There we go. All right, let's lose like one more game here against Toronto. That'd be brilliant. Of course, we win it. All right, so regular season over. We didn't we didn't go crazy with the EHEs and make the playoffs. I'm kind of glad about that. It always bums me out. Even if we benefit from the cheese, I don't like the cheese. Oh, I'm not gonna get the end of AHL. That's way too far. I forget the first two years are they're very spread out. The end of the season. So Gallagher, Gallagher, what was your top production guy? And I will take a look at all the stats, even though it's not gonna be pretty. We had an 80-point year, second to last in the division, 2.79 goals for per game. Now, that's not as bad as it could have been. Two point, that wasn't as bad as it could have been either, the goals against. Power play, pretty bad. I know people, I know they got a top 10 power play this year. I was referring to last year when they had a terrible power play last year. Don't hate me. The memes, they're only memes, man. Don't worry. I'm here in the same boat with you. I'm right now, oh my god. <laughs> Lol. <laughs> Great on the road. Taylor won home ice. Oh, this isn't Ottawa. What is this? All right. Well, 60 points for Gallagher, 57 for Tatar. Drew in with 55, Coke Kanemi with 54. So at least they got 50 point years. Hopefully they won't get any stat minuses. That will slow down their development. But uh, you like to see Coach Kanyemi getting that growth and likely will be a first-line guy by next year. Doesn't really fit into the schemes super well. At least this current coach, but that's going to be changing. We're, we're likely going to be switching over coaches maybe over this next year, at least when we start getting more talent filtering and we want more teaching and, you know, schemes that will fit in better with what their uh, wants and desires are. <laughs> Defensively... Wow, Sherratt, 
Sherratt point production guy. <laughs> uh, Juleson ended with 22 points, ended up with a minus as well. That's probably because I moved him around. Mate, hopefully we'll see some decent jumps from these two in the offseason. I mean, Juleson already grew a bit over the course of this year, but he's now 23. Mate, you, you were hoping he would grow a bit more. But offseason jump, we'll see what happens. See what Carey Price's numbers were. <laughs> yeah, not great. Oh, lol, Hutchins. I didn't see his numbers before he got here, but holy hell. What? <laughs> oh, he's an 80? Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, Gary Price, I think those numbers did get slightly better, but they're still Omega lol numbers. Because, well, we're on a Omega lol team right now. And because he's an elite goalie, why would he sim well? This is EA. Oh my goodness, Crosby! Sidney Crosby takes over the point scoring. 108 points for Crosby, 104 for McKinnon, 102 for McJesus, 95 for Malkin, 95 for Pedersen, Backstrom, and there's Ovi. Oh yeah, baby. So there we go. And, oh yeah, and I should address this. To get scoring more realistic, uh, like this, to the NHL, um, instead of setting it to high scoring, because they have that option now, that doesn't really work, and it actually tanks goalie stats, like, horribly. Um, what you want to do is, uh, I'll just show you guys, I'll just... I'll show you guys in a sec. <laughs> Let's just finish this off. Uh, Ovi taking home the Maurice Richard, beating Malkin by one goal, assist leader. Would be Backstrom with 75, plus minus 33 for Bergeron, then Besser as well. Let's check out who the deadly snipers are. Ovi, that's, yeah, that's insane. Um, but Malkin, look at that shooting percentage, almost 20%. Who's the most clutch? Um... That would be dry, uh, dry saddle or Horvat, who are the most clutch. Look at the ratio of their goals in game winners. All right, power play goal leader, Line A with 19. That makes sense. And uh, Tavares with 32 points total on the power play. Who's deadly shorthanded? Kopitar with four shorty goals. The most points was Corrali. And then Bergeron as well. Yep, Boston's got that deadly PK. All right, and let's check the defensive stats. Let me guess, O'Reilly? Yep, uh, just give him the cell key. Ow, wait a second. Wait a second. Nah. Less block shots, but a better ratio. Way better plus minus, Crosby. Crosby for Selkie, fuck O'Reilly. This is Crosby. I know, okay, now he doesn't play PK. That might be, they might take some away from him. But uh, if the game, Loves its plus minus and face off percentage as it seems to. They might still give it to Crosby here. Realistically, since O'Reilly clearly plays a PK, you would give it to him. But, I don't know. We'll see. Crosby might win it here in this game. Crosby for Selkie. Taking home all those trophies. Man, imagine that. He's getting like the heart and the. <laughs> and he's going to get the Selkie. Klingberg, 70 points. 70 points for Klingberg. And who's this? Who's this scrub? And why is he getting so many points? That's completely unrealistic, EA. How am I supposed to feel good about this game when you got un unrealistic shit like this happening? Crazy, man. Yeah, OEL up here makes sense. Duncan Keith! <laughs> 64 points for Duncan Keith. Unreal, man. That's another reason why I'm just like, do I sh should I really try for realism when the game does shit like this? <laughs> oh my god. Oh, good stuff, but... It looks like Klingberg should win that Norris. He's got the most plus minus. He's got you know, similar ice time. Oh, not a lot of hits, though, for Klingberg. Better ratio. They'll probably give it to Dowdy because he'll be due for it or something. Some stupid reason when he always wins the Norris. Whatever dumb, illegitimate reason they give when they give Dowdy the Norris. I forget. All right. Hutton. Mid, mid low 80 goaltender wins the Vesna. What a surprise. No one is ever surprised. Freddie Anderson up there makes sense, but uh, Hutton is kind of there on his own as the top goalie in the NHL. Because you got, why would, why would this guy outplay, you know, a, a mid low 80 goaltender? <laughs> it's Freddie Anderson. Yes, he's got, he's got to carry a defenseless Toronto team on his back. Then there's Pekka Rene with a tremendous defensive core in front of him. But no, no, he's not better than Carter Hutton either. Quite obviously. <laughs> uh, you love the sim in this game. You gotta love it. Alright, so Carter Hutton, pretty sure no one guessed him 
At this point, if you're going for the goalie guess, just guess the weirdest low 80 goaltender you can, and he'll probably win it. All right, Capo Caco, best rookie confirmed. Suck it, Hughes. <laughs> All right, so 57 points for Caco, 55 for Hughes. Uh oh, did Hughes not grow? <laughs> we'll have to see. Any goalie steal in the show? Probably not, especially not in this first year. But uh, give it up to Samsonov, who's looking like a pretty good goalie of the future. Played 23 games, had those kind of numbers. They were kind of above league average, as we saw. So there you go. All right, we'll do the fun stats here. And then before I check the growth, I gotta check. I gotta show you guys my the settings because I actually didn't do that. I, I completely blew that over. All right, one and it's a Benajad. One guy over 200 hits and it's a Benajad. Dotchin. Oh, no Dotson to speak of, but there's Clifford and Plug and then Cassian. All right, good stuff. Clifford leading in fights because he knows the Muffin Man. All righty, good stuff. Tom Wilson only with five fights. Again, how, how, how do you want me to do realism when Tom Wilson's only five? Now, that's the amount of times he should be ejected, but fights, he should have at least ten, right? <laughs> All right, so there's that for you. And all right, let me show you guys before we go into the growth and stuff like that and wrap things up here, what I'm doing for settings. Because you're probably, you're probably curious about that. I don't really change too much settings-wise. Um, Rules-wise, oh, it's not in here, is it? No, but here you'll see, I think this is where it shows you. Um, you can see trade difficulty on our sim engine scoring. Keep that on medium. Don't be tempted to put it to high because it's it doesn't make it good. It makes the goalies have really, really terrible, terrible stats. Makes them all Martin Jones, basically. So don't do that. Go to sliders, keep it on medium, and crank up attribute effects from 5 to 10. So do that. And that's the only thing you need to do. You don't need to touch any other slider because all these, these are just gameplay sliders. They do not affect the simulation. None of those affect the simulation. This, the general tab, is the only one that will affect simulation because fatigue, like fatigue, I don't know if that bad, but the injury, you can see what I have injuries set on there from 50 to 20 because I still like injuries. It makes you actually have to keep depth and use depth and th stuff like that. But yeah, this is the only one that affects the simulation. So there you go, attribute effects. Crank that up and you will see the scoring as we have it now. And it'll fluctuate. You'll see higher scoring years too. This is, I think, one of the lower scoring years. Well, yeah, when we start drafting more talent stuff, you'll see the, the numbers start to pop up there. All right, so there we go. We're obviously not in the playoffs. Let's check out how some of our younger guys are doing. Hudon was our top scorer. Did we? Yeah, we should. Yeah, we made the playoffs at least. Laval made the playoffs, so maybe we should follow their their progress here. And I will. Yeah, I should change Caulfield to a winger. I've been like putting that off. I'm like I'm like not caring about it right until like he makes it towards the NHL, but maybe I should do it now. He's up to a 73, so he's definitely grown. And he got he had 33 goals on that third line with power play time, 12 power play goals. So he's still a 20 goal scorer on that third line. Good for Caulfield. And obviously we need to do some extensions too, but good, good production there. Yeah, I, you like to see it. All right. So let's check out the growth. I would love to see where we got all of it. Good old menu lag. Let's check it out. We should have got, I want to see, yeah, yeah, yeah. Kokiami grew a bunch. I know that. Yeah, Juleson did grow indeed. Unfortunately, his awareness didn't go up. That's mm, kind of sucky, but whatever. Uh, defensively, didn't really grow too much, but he's still solid. Yeah, good growth from him. Hopefully, he gets a nice little bump. That'd be cool. We can, we can maybe make that guy into a top four yet, or at least a spot fill in top four. Uh, Domi. Oh, he got some natural growth as well to his face-offs, to his discipline. Good. <laughs> Places he can improve. Face-offs and discipline. I like it. And uh, Coke Kanyemi is passing one up a bunch. Unfortunately, his, yeah, which his awareness was his passing, 93 and 89. But, you know, beggars can't be choosers, I guess. Tremendous deking. Not the strongest of shots, but it's still serviceable. Good defense. Yeah. Face-offs could go up. He's only 74. But he's got time. He's only 19. He's only 19. He's got plenty more growth to him. So there we go. Drew in. Is that real growth? Yes, it was. Discipline went up. Accuracies went up. And durability went up. So not a ton, but there you go. And let's check here. All right, that's a bit better. Bit better growth. 
Top nine guys growing. Top six guys. There's Egan and growing. Unfortunately, awareness didn't go up. Not bad, though. Not too bad. Jake Evans is looking like a role player. I like that. How's his defense? Oh, yeah. Jake Evans, role player of the future. Hell, yeah. Another center, too. How's your face-offs? Eh, not bad. All right. Let's go by potentials here and see if we're... Yeah, unfortunately, Kale Fleur didn't grow, but he'll get a nice jump anyway. Yeah, those depth guys are so hard, man. But I didn't, also didn't want him. So Suzuki grew a tiny bit. Offensive went good. Offensive awareness and defensive awareness. Well, two things I could have used. But yeah, he will jump again. And once he's got NHL ready, then we can play him. But which he he should do this next year. If he will, he should. I mean, if he doesn't jump in the offseason, that's a little crazy. He damn well should. Oh yeah, Romanov got some decent growth as well. Olafson got quite a lot. But it's not a huge amount. It's just spread out in a lot of different areas. So there we go. All right. There's your growth. Sweetness. So before we go and follow follow that, uh, that AHL team throughout the playoffs, extension time. I don't have my phone. One sec. <laughs> All right. So here is a big one. Domi. I would like to get him a bit more longer term than that. But that price goes up quite a bit. So we're likely going to have to get him shorter term because I don't want to pay him that much. Hell to the no. I'm not paying him. <laughs> nope. So I guess we're giving a bridge deal to Domi, which is a little scary because he might hit me with that. I don't want to come back on this team in my prime. I want to test free agency, but I don't really like bumping him up that much more. Maybe I can go to three. Maybe. Yeah, you know what? Let's try three then. That'll that'll give us a bit more wiggle room. Goes up quite a bit. You see how much jump that is, though. Jeez, man. What would I pay for? That's over. That's six point five six. Hmm. So basically, right there for three years. Or two years around more five. Well, we won't be strapped for cash, and I would rather get that extra year of wiggle. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do the three years. It lines them up with Drew in as well. So that helps. Don't have to sign Kokanyemi yet. Uh, Juleson needs to get signed. He shouldn't want too much. Okay, he wants a bit more than I thought he would. But it's because he's got that top four potential. Uh, whatever. We, we'll have the cash. Oops. We'll have the cash right now. So it's not the biggest of deals, but yeah. Yeah, 3.25 essentially for two years. Yep. It's all right. Not horrible. Mete as well. He'll he'll want less, and I could maybe. There we go. Yeah, that's better. Now we could really, really have this guy for a while in our top six, even if he caps out. I'm kind of thinking to do that. Give him almost like a five year deal. And uh, for, he doesn't fit this system, but I mean, we're getting a new coach anyway, so we'll be able to. I mean, if I can get him. Whew, six years takes him up to his 27. Let's take him up to his 26. Oops. 0.85. So 1.625 for five. Yeah. That's a steal of a top six deal. And that will help us maintain some money. Now, Cousins. Probably, yeah. I don't need to extend him. That's, yeah, kind of it for there. Hutchinson. I mean, he was, he was horrible. <laughs> we might look for a new backup. But I think that's kind of it. Olofsson isn't a need right now. Hudon, I think you grab back. Wow, Mr. Center was 65 face-offs. Oh, damn. Huh, I'm holding off on that. Olofsson you keep around, though. Most likely. But I don't have to sign him now. I'm just thinking of guys I don't want to give up here. All right, so Caulfield, obviously. Let's get him to a three or two way. He might not accept that, but we shall see. 
That's kind of the main ones here. Romanov as well. What? Alright, hold off on that, clearly. <laughs> He's like, I want an NHL deal, bitch. Whoa. Slow down there. Alright, yeah. That should be fine for now. They should all accept. I don't know. The three years trying to get Caulfield to like a three year entry level. That's probably a little bit over the top there. He, he's, he's making the NHL before that, most likely. But look at, look at Frugelson already trying to save some of that money. Let's follow along our uh, AHL team here and see how far the Laval Rocket get in the playoffs. We got Caulfield back. That's beautiful. That's a really good deal. Also got Domi back. Got Mete back. We got Juleson. So that's everyone. Sweet. All of the guys accepted their extensions. Good end of the season. For Laval, let's see how they'll do in the playoffs. Rochester 1-0, 2-0. Uh-oh. There we go. They finish them off in four. On to the second round. They go. Uh-oh. Oh, there you go. Even the series back up. Uh, Michael, Matthew, Michael Pekka. Matthew Pekka is out. All right, so you know what that means. Caulfield's hopping up. Yeah, we want to go far, so let's let's put Lynch in there. There we go. Come on, uh oh. All right, answered back and three straight wins to move on to the AHL Conference Finals against Charlotte. Uh oh, two straight losses getting trounced. Um, we uh, that's usually for me. You know what? I will do this actually. Because I do want to get a lot of scouting. Yeah, we already know what Lafreniere is, blah, blah, blah. Good, Byfield is starting to get scouted. Beautiful. Do it again. We already know he's an elite, but it's still good to have the info. Nightingale, man. I, that's one of my favorite names in this game. Any of these guys fake? None who aren't BS got. Alright, let's go to potentials again. Let's do this real quick. Alright, let's move you up. Alright, let's go down to the lows now. Come on, we gotta have some more in here, right? Do I get any guarantees? Not quite. Getting close, but no cigars still. Where is his draft rank? Yeah is kind of where it could happen, but it's looking more like a low top six, if I'm going to be completely honest. Yeah. Zaitsev, though. Could be something cool. I'm just seeing some if we have any fake dudes here. <laughs> wow, a lot of low top fours. Bunch of starting goaltenders. So we got that going for us. That's definitely a high top nine. That guy in there, though, could be some kind of a steal. Probably not likely. But there's a chance. There is a chance. This guy, especially with his scout ranking, he could be something. Nikita Nikitin. Probably not. Any two tick? Nope. Anyone for here? No. Interesting. Alright, anyone that guy's doesn't look real, so let's get him scouted if I can. Not a whole lot of time left. That'll do it. Alright. Well, we're down. We got Matthew Pekka back. That'll help a bit. How's Caulfield been doing? I want to keep him up here. Nine points in 13 games played. I might just keep him there. How is Matthew Pekka doing? He is better. But he only had three points in seven games played. So he's now centering the third line. We got Caulfield up there. Killing it. Come on. Yay. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh! We brought it back. <laughs> we brought it back. Uh, Olofsson. No. Another injury now to our AHL team. Whoa. Laval, though. Oh, no. We have Osner. Get Osner in there, bitch. Let's go. <laughs> Osner playing with Kale Flurry. At least we're getting tons of experience for our younger guys down here. That's a great... Yeah, we're here in the Calder Cup Finals. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, <laughs> down 0-3. Oh, no. Olofsson's back. Get Carl Osner out of there. He's not good. He's terrible for us. Oh, Caulfield, poor you. Come 
Get coffee oil on the top line. Do it. Big yikes. Okay. This is not going well. Try to get Caulfield to shoot a bunch. Win. Oh, we lose in the Calder Cup Finals to Bakersfield. And that doesn't matter because it's over. All right. So we made it to the Calder Cup Finals, but lose. Stop. Stop the tape. Stop. <laughs> oh, what a season for Laval, though. Oh, so close yet so far. Bakersfield. Beats us handily. We couldn't keep the puck out of the net and couldn't really score. We didn't get more than two goals in a game. We got handled in that Calder Cup final. But there you go, guys. First year in the books here for our Montreal Canadiens franchise mode. Our first draft should be a doozy. And it'll be coming up in the next episode, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Remember to leave that like. And I'll see you in the next one.